comments, but I'm always happy to take the floor, particularly in this brand new uh, West Block Commons, Mr. Speaker. To start off, I want to echo the comments of many of my colleagues and our leader uh, to thank all the people that have been part of this historic move and renovation of this amazing space. Um, our parliament is in session when Canadians send their, their representatives and we meet to debate the issues of the day with you moderating the debate, Mr. Speaker, the MACE. So while the room may change, the institution is core to our country. And the success we've had as one of the leading countries of the world is rooted in our democracy. And I'll speak about that in depth, Mr. Speaker, because there's actually been an erosion in responsible government under this government. In fact, when it comes to uh, debt, deficit, and taxation, they are actually deviating from the historic responsible government model that Canada's parliamentary democracy enjoys, Mr. Speaker. So I'll get to that later. But the member for Carleton brought a really good motion today because there is no plan with this government. No plan to balance the budget. No plan to withhold more and future tax increases on top of the ones that have already been in place. And there's been broken promises by the Liberal government with respect to their core economic agenda. So this Opposition Day motion raises this as an important national issue. And the House is calling upon the government to do a simple thing. Table a plan to get back to balance, Mr. Speaker, and to do that with a pledge of no future tax increases. Why is that plan a good one and should be simple, Mr. Speaker? Because the Harper government did that amid the worst economic recession since the Great Depression, Mr. Speaker, where we were the only country of stability within the G7 with a balanced budget that was maintained while we lowered taxes on families, seniors, and uh, employers, Mr. Speaker. That was tough to do, particularly when there was global stagnation. We had positive growth, we had balanced budget, and we had lower taxes. You had to have a plan to do that, Mr. Speaker. So before I speak about the plan, let's talk about the promise, because Canadians were in fact misled by this Prime Minister. I've said a few times in the House, Mr. Speaker, what should scare Canadians is that midway through an election, the Prime Minister, then the third party leader, changed his core economic plan in the middle of the election to win votes away from the NDP. He was willing to throw out their economic plan, the most important thing a government does, in order to curry votes. At the beginning of the election, they were the party of Paul Martin, balanced budgets. They quoted David Dodge and all these things about prudent and sound economic management. Midway through, Mr. Speaker, they lied to Canadians. They said, we're in a recession, which was not true, Mr. Speaker. So we're going to run modest deficits. That we know is not true, Mr. Speaker. In order to stimulate the economy with infrastructure spending, Mr. Speaker. That itself, as the Parliamentary Budget Officer has shown, is not true as well, Mr. Speaker. So they lied to Canadians about the crisis. We're in a recession. They suggested they were going to have short-term modest deficits based on infrastructure to get the economy moving. All of that has been proven to be untrue, Mr. Speaker. Recall, their election pledge to Canadians. We've seen it online. You just have to scroll to see the Prime Minister's comments from various speeches, debates. He said that the Liberal government would run modest deficits, never larger than $10 billion, and that they would be back into balance by 2019. All of that, again, was false, Mr. Speaker. Despite having the best economic times in 25 years because of a booming U.S. economy, we have seen deficits that have been double or more what he promised. Rather than balancing the budget this year in 2019, the Prime Minister and his Finance Minister refused to even give a future date for balance, Mr. Speaker. And we've seen money has not gone out to infrastructure in the GTA, in Whitby, in Pickering, in Brampton. They're waiting, Mr. Speaker. There's actually been a slowdown. And when it comes to spending on affordable housing and other forms of social infrastructure, They've back-end loaded all the funding announcements, so they announced big numbers, 
but the money won't flow till the mid-2020s, Mr. Speaker. So why this motion today? We want the government to stop its shell game on the economy and to stop relying on Canadian families, seniors and small businesses as the people they can squeeze and squeeze again for their overspending. How can I say that, Mr. Speaker? Because this government, by its third budget, had increased spending by over 20 per cent. They had increased spending across the board, including hiring of personnel, which is the largest expense for most departments, a 20 per cent increase in spending by this government, increased revenues where their revenue forecasts are out by five and ten billion dollars. So they're bringing in more money because the economy's been doing well. They're spending even more than they're bringing in, Mr. Speaker, and they've increased the spending of the federal government by 20 per cent, and most Canadian families couldn't tell you any positive development from that, Mr. Speaker. More growth in the office towers in Ottawa, and we hear reports in the last week of a majority of Canadians $200 away from bankruptcy, Mr. Speaker, or almost a majority, I believe. These are challenging times in manufacturing in Ontario, the Oshawa area, the GM announcement. Our resource sector in Western Canada for years now have been feeling it, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister and the Finance Minister, who live in a gilded cage, Mr. Speaker, they don't understand the needs of families and seniors and small businesses in my area in Durham. So that's why they say, no problem. We don't need to ever balance the budget because in their world, budgets do balance themselves. Someone, they hire someone to do that. They hire someone to manage the affairs of their trust or, or their family fortune, as the Prime Minister says it. They need to do a reality check with Canadians. Life is not better, 20% better from their 20% overspending, Mr. Speaker. Canadians are being squeezed, and we all know that the deficits of today, be they 18 billion, 28 billion, these are the numbers we've been in in the last few years, Mr. Speaker, the deficits of today are the higher taxes of tomorrow. And when my daughter, who's 12 now, will be in university at the rate that this government could balance the, the budget, she can guarantee herself that she will have to pay higher taxes then because of their mismanagement now, Mr. Speaker. So the deficit and spending is out of control. In the last budget, they used the word investment 450 plus times in the budget document. You know what investment is in liberal language? It's spending, Mr. Speaker. You can frame it in more positive sounding language, Mr. Speaker, but it just shows reckless and wanton spending because they always feel they can squeeze Canadians. They can squeeze farmers in terms of transitioning the, the family farm, succession planning. They can squeeze small businesses and physicians and other people who have retained earnings to try and make sure they can plan for the uncertainties in life, for unemployment, for maternity leave, for their retirement. This government's even talking about re-auctioning wireless spectrum, Madam Speaker. Re-auctioning, essentially expropriating uh, resources so that they can squeeze more money out of it. They actually have crown agencies right now who have been tasked with trying to raise more revenue. They've got both a spending and a revenue problem. They've raised taxes on people, on small businesses. They're bringing in a nationalized carbon tax. They brought in a payroll tax on small businesses. They cut tax-free savings account that hurt seniors in particular. They've raised new taxes on ride sharing. Your Saturday night, as they say, they raised taxes on alcohol and your Uber ride home. They love the, the cannabis change, Madam Speaker, because they can tax that too. And you know what they tried to do to, in contrary fashion to representative government? They tried to put an escalator clause in on the alcohol tax raises, meaning they weren't even going to come back to the legislature before they raised taxes yet again. Dozens of tax increases on Canadians, reckless spending. This is why today we're asking the Prime Minister, it's time for a plan to get back to balance, 
and to lower taxes. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we saw you know, what the previous government had done. Uh, they thought they could cut their way to growth and uh, very quickly realized that that's not how things work. You need to invest like any person who's been in, in business. Uh, I ran a small business for, for 25 years and uh, in order to grow that business, I invested in that business and it grew that business. As my, incre as my income increased, I was able to inc increase the level of debt. I was able to invest in that business and therefore bring about even further growth in that business. Um, you can't cut your way uh, to growth. Um, we've invested in Canadians, and that's seen a record 800,000 jobs created in the country and the lowest unemployment rate in over 40 years. What I'm looking to the, to the, to the member opposite is, what are you going to cut? Uh, what is your plan? Uh, is you going to cut the, the tax-free Canada child benefit? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Member, he's to address the questions to the chair and not to the individual members. Uh, the Honourable Member for Durham. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and uh, I don't think the member from Hastings would be going back to his riding and talking to many of his small business friends, Madam Speaker, because his government's attempt to tax retained earnings, to tax dividends, to tax the small businesses he claims to come from caused almost a tax revolt from small business, including throughout Prince Edward Hastings, Durham, Northumberland. All of those members are very worried, and they should be, because small businesses are seeing less growth. They're seeing higher taxes, more regulation. They're seeing a government whose plan, after a bad deal on NAFTA, is to tax them with Canadian tariffs. In fact, when I go by that member's area or throughout Southern Ontario, small businesses have had enough with this government. They see them as a piggy bank they can keep going to to fuel the overspending of this Prime Minister, Madam Speaker, on issues that aren't priority. It's about a plan. What's wrong with having a plan? The Honourable Member for Courtney Albury. They upheld a tax system that wasn't working for everyday Canadians. They supported tax havens that we saw uh, benefited the wealthy, CEO stock option loopholes. In the meantime, the government of the day, they, the Conservative government ran a deficit of $160 billion, Madam Speaker. And on their pathway to balancing the budget, they upheld a tax system that benefited the rich, and they, their cuts were on the backs of everyday Canadians. And those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice, Madam Speaker, are veterans. And I have a lot of respect for this member. Madam Speaker, because he's stood up for veterans, he, he's called for support for veterans, he was the Veterans Affairs Minister, and under the Conservative watch, they fired a thousand staff at Veterans Affairs, and that's resulted in a backlog, Madam Speaker, that has uh, affected veterans that have had their disability applications uh, unopened, waiting for them uh, to be uh, 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 addressed and, and uh, in a timely fashion. In this government, of course, the Liberals promised to fix that, but does the member regret cutting the 1,000 staff at Veterans Affairs that has created this enormous backlog and has uh, inhibited veterans from getting the services they rightfully deserve. I remember for Durham. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'll correct the member on both his tax claims and his veteran claims. Specific, he talked about the pathway the Harper government had back to balance. We did. After the global recession, we had a very difficult but planned path to get back to balance. And we didn't raise taxes. In fact, our cuts to the GST and raising of the basic personal exemption helped low-income Canadians the most, Madam Speaker. So we, across the board, helped middle class, uh, lower middle class incomes across the board and small businesses or the hirers. On the veterans front, M Madam Speaker, we actually removed most of the paperwork done, created the MyVac account, which that member knows. I had veterans actually say, how do you want to be served as Afghan veterans? You don't go to the offices like the World War II veterans did, Madam Speaker. By the end, we knew where resources needed to be put, so we put about 300 employees back in to some of the claims processing for mental health, Mr. Madam Speaker. That got the backlog down under my watch, Madam Speaker, and the member knows that. This government has allowed the, the backlog to rise back up because there's been no effective hand who understood veterans. They broke their promise on pensions, they were just placating people. I'm hopeful that the new minister, who's much more substantive than the previous two, will bring some truth and a plan to veterans as well, Madam Speaker, because they have the resources to keep the backlog down. They just need to apply it 
to the employees, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Resuming debate, Reprise uh, de Debat, the Honourable Member for Brampton North. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, it's been a very interesting debate today.